Honeymoon's over. When you married him, did you realize you married them? The in-laws. Love them or hate them, they're now yours. Tips to help you adjust. In-laws driving you crazy. On the next Real Life, Monday, 5 Eastern on CN8. Today, we'll visit one of the most famous battlefields in the United States, where the war that shaped this nation came knocking on the door of a tiny little town. And we'll stop in a restaurant whose menu reflects the time this famous battle was fought. Next, on A Dinner for Two. Everybody. Welcome to A Dinner for Two. I'm Mike Rossi. And I'm Gabrielle Vaughn. We're in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where one of the greatest battles in the Civil War was fought. Today we'll explore some of the most historic sites of that battle and learn how it shaped our nation and the lives in this little town. And we'll visit the Farnsworth House. Not only was this place here during the war, but it was one of many buildings that changed hands as fighting raged from corner to corner. And we'll meet Chef J.R. Schultz. He maintains a menu that reflects a time when Union and Confederate soldiers fought in these very streets. And while Mike makes his way inside the Farnsworth, I'll tell you a little bit about this historic place. Before Confederate General Robert E. Lee marched his 75,000 troops north from Virginia, not many people knew that Gettysburg existed. A small farm town in south central Pennsylvania, it was most noted for its seminary school. But the few thousand people who lived in Gettysburg would soon be caught in the middle of 170,000 warring soldiers. Over three days in July of 1863, the town would be forever changed. As you walk the streets of Gettysburg, signs of the battle still exist. And the many stores throughout town provide hours of fun shopping for all kinds of Civil War memorabilia, from uniforms to used bullet casings. You can also go antiquing in this charming little burg. Perhaps no building in Gettysburg shows more signs of the battle than the Farnsworth House. The side of the building is strafed with bullet holes from those three days in July. Its attic was a sniper's nest and was rumored responsible for the only civilian death during the battle. The basement was a place where many wounded soldiers sought shelter and eventually met their demise. Today, the Farnsworth has maintained its historic facade and its historic menu. And with more on that, let's head inside to Mike. Thanks, Gabrielle. I'm standing inside the kitchen of the Farnsworth House here with the executive chef, J.R. Schultz. And J.R., thanks for letting us invade your space today. Sure. And uh, we're going to make an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert in just a moment. We're going to get started. But first, before we do, tell me about what is on the menu. What will you find when you come here to the Farnsworth? Okay, pretty much what you'll find is southern dishes, also Pennsylvania Dutch, and, of course, German. And what we basically try to do is do the old cooking for our customers to try the way food used to be cooked. So maybe you could taste what the soldiers may have tasted here in the Civil War days, right? Exactly. And of course that Pennsylvania Dutch influence because we're in Dutch country. Right. Sounds good. All right. Now for our appetizer, we're going to get started and we are going to make? Peanut soup. Peanut soup. All right. Well, let's get started. Come on over here. We have all the ingredients lined up. What's the first step we have to do? The first step that we're going to do is, of course, we're going to uh, saute the uh, onions and also the celery. Which we already started over which there. Which we already started over okay. here. Okay. So what we'll need to do is drain it. How long will that cook, first of all? Uh, it, it basically just depends. Uh, probably close to a half an hour. Okay. You'll want to get her down. And we just want to use the broth, right? Exactly. So we're going to get rid right. of the onions and the celery pieces, exactly. actually. All right. Good enough. Yeah, there we go. All right. Dump that over here. Okay, then we have the broth ready. What's we, next? Okay, we're going to add the peanut butter. Regular old Cre store bought peanut butter? Creamy peanut butter. Creamy, not chunky. No. All right. Creamy. Can you use light peanut butter? Some people worried about a high fat content. Is that all right? That's that's perfectly okay. Great. All right, so we uh, we got the peanut butter in there. That's kind of a a unique combination, onion, celery, and peanut butter. Yes, it is. But it's going to be a, a good thing at the end, right? You have. Great. All right, what's okay. next? You whip that up? We'll whip this up a little bit, and then we're going to add the chicken base. Okay. And just as we do it, we're going to mix it. Okay. Next would be the salt. All right. I want to get that good consistency going okay. and keep 
keep it mixing, right? Right. And then we're going to go ahead and add the caramel coloring. Need the caramel coloring. All right, I'll help you out there. And it's pretty much for the color. And then what's next? Then we'll add the now, milk. Of course, you're keeping mixing. Right. As we're and going, then we'll along. add the we'll milk. Just dump that in there. Yep. Just add that up in there. there. All right. Okay, and then we have the margarine. Okay, me again? All right, you only have two hands, so I'll help you out. There you go, thank you. And then we're going to mix the flour. The whole thing here? Uh, let me just right, take you, a look you, at you it. You handle that. Now, if you need the exact measurements, of course, you can find that on our website. We'll have the recipe on at dinnerfor2.com. But here you're getting the idea of what we're doing. Okay. So the flour's going to thicken it up? It, it, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to mix it up as best as we can. Okay. And then we're going to set it on the stove. And okay. it's going to take probably close to two hours just to simmer. You got to let this simmer for two hours. Exactly. You have on to a, go back and heat. stir it once in a while? Yes, you do. Okay. Now we have some that's already been simmering. Right. Conveniently. And uh, that is finished. I see the consistency. Look, it looks like soup. I'm really anxious to try this because. This is something different. I've never had it. And this is something that Georgia soldiers used to eat, right? Exactly. What's the other name for it you told me? Georgia Militia Peanut Soup. Wow. And then we'll just add some of the crushed nuts on the top for, for garnish. Little, little garnish? A little bit of garnish. That's excellent. It's different, but great. Good. Georgia Militia, Militia or? Goober P. Or Goober P. I'm glad you said right. that. Thanks, Jared. We'll be back to uh, make the entree in just a bit. But right now, we're going to go find Gabrielle and she's at one of the most famous spots on the battlefield. Mike, 54,000 soldiers were killed or injured in the three days of fighting in Gettysburg. One of the bloodiest parts of the battle occurred here at a place the soldiers named the Devil's Den. This massive collection of prehistoric boulders became a place where the Confederates dug in and eventually launched their assault on Little Round Top. Visitors to Gettysburg can see Devil's Den as it existed back in 1863, as much of this rock formation has not changed. And as you take a guided tour through the entire battlefield or use a CD tour with your car stereo, you can see that so much remains exactly as it was in 1863. Not only will you find buildings and other landmarks with cannonballs and bullet holes lodged into their side, but the National Park has erected hundreds of very creative and beautiful monuments to honor the different regiments and brigades that fought here. You can find a picturesque statue honoring soldiers from your hometown, or unique ones like that honoring the Irish Brigade. As you can see, not much has changed at all. When we come back, we'll visit the place where the Confederates made their last stand, and Mike will have more with Chef J.R. of the Farnsworth. All when a dinner for two continues. On the next A Dinner for Two, history haunts New Hope, Pennsylvania in more ways than one. We'll visit the Logan Inn, frequented by celebrities and revolutionary soldiers since the 1700s, while Chef Albiero Fiasci shares the secrets that make dining at the Logan truly memorable. We'll explore the stories surrounding one of the most haunted buildings in America. Perhaps it's the guests that haven't left that will surprise you most about the Logan Inn. That's on the next A Dinner for Two. I love spring. Everything is turning green and the flowers are starting to bloom. You can smell the freshness of the earth on the warm breeze. It always gives me the energy to get outside and enjoy it. When I head for the garden store, it reminds me how much I like living where you can get the very best of anything that grows. Jersey Fresh. It comes in green and a whole variety of other colors. Pick the best. Jersey Fresh. You can bring the adventures of A Dinner for Two right into your home on the World Wide Web. www.adinnerfor2.com has all the recipes from every episode of A Dinner for Two, as well as stories and pictures from all of the things we do, places we see, and people we meet. And to help with all your adventures, A Dinner for Two.com offers a restaurant search engine so you can dine in style wherever you go. www.adinnerfor2.com Sports Connection with Lou Tilly. Lou's got more than highlights, more than scores. Lou's got players, coaches, and all the sports stuff you play. No matter what your game is, Lou's got it covered. Sports Connection with Lou Tilly. Weeknights, 11 Eastern, only on CNN. 
CN8.TV. Log on, tune in, find out. Meeting CN8's on-air team. Finding out what's happening in my town. Watching CN8 on my computer? It's really great. CN8.TV. Log on, tune in, find out. Welcome back to A Dinner for Two. I'm standing at what is called the high water mark of the Confederacy. This is considered the northernmost point reached by Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army. On the verge of losing the battle after two days of fighting, General Lee ordered one last risky charge across this wide open stretch of land, straight into the full force of the Union Army. Pickett's charge, named after the Major General who led it, was a suicidal march over 1,400 yards of wide open field. Confederate soldiers bravely faced a hail of bullets and cannonballs as the Union men fired at will into their ranks, decimating the army as it fell in waves. Despite the tremendous odds, the Confederates did reach the Union line here at the high water mark and almost broke through. Finally forced to retreat, the Army of Northern Virginia was all but destroyed, with more than half of their numbers gone. When the Confederate leaders ordered their charge, they pointed to this copse of trees just past the Union lines and made it their rally point. Every desperate soldier in General Lee's army that day started that charge with the desire to end in this very spot I'm standing. And it's landmarks like this that still exist in the park that bring a sense of place to visitors in Gettysburg. You can stand next to these trees and realize how one day in July of 1863, a soldier's desire to reach this exact spot changed the course of American history. And you know, one of the most important parts of the day for any soldier was, and still is, mealtime, which brings us back to the kitchen of the Farnsworth house. Here with head chef J.R. Schultz. And J.R., you're going to show us how to make your specialty of the house, which is also something that soldiers of the Civil War era may have enjoyed themselves. And it's called? Game pie. Game pie. All right, let's get started. Okay. First step is? First step is we're going to fill the pot up here with water. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add our wild rice. Okay. Already cooked. Already cooked. All right. Next will be our regular white rice. Okay. So wild rice and white rice already cooked right into the water. Good. Right. Okay. Next up will be our beef base. Beef base? Mm-hmm. Now we basically add all the ingredients at one time and then we'll go ahead and let it simmer. Okay. Next step will be our caramel coloring. All right. Now we use this in the appetizer for coloring. Is it something it, similar it, here? Yes. Okay. It is for color. Great. And then we're going to put in a little Worcestershire sauce. Now from the ingredients, this looks like it's going to be a real hearty dish. It's the, is, it's the stick to your rib type dish. And that's basically what the error was. They ate that sort of exactly. Uh, exactly. hearty dish all the time, right? Right. Okay. Our next step would be the crushed tomatoes. Now, does it have to be a puree or can you use... No, it would not have to. You want to kind of chop them up at least all right. fairly fine, though. Great. Okay. And then the next will be our currant jelly. Okay. That's got a distinctive flavor and also, doesn't it? It, it, really, it really comes out in it also. Next step would be the mushrooms. Mushrooms, which you already have. Now, does it matter what kind you use? No, no. Fresh or canned? Fresh, you or, can use canned. Of course, fresh is always better. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so the mushrooms are in, then what? Right, and then we're gonna put in the chopped onions. Uh, let's see, garlic powder. Garlic powder, good. Mm -hmm. Now you're just mixing as I'm you just, go along, just right? Just mixing a little bit as we go on. Get all the flavors right. together. Right, as it heats up, it will start to blend a lot nicer and heavier. Okay, white the pepper. White pepper, good. And then we'll hit a little bit of salt in it. Salt. How about I do that? That's fine. There we go. I want to feel like I helped a that's, little, you know. That's fine. Standing around watching. That, that's fine. All right, so after the okay. pepper. Then we're going to add margarine. So you have some melted margarine here? Right. Now, you, we'll just have to whip it real good when we go to put the flour in, which okay. will be our next step. That's I'll give the, you that. We'll have a tendency to lump up on you, but once you whip it and 
simmer it on a stove, it seems just to melt away. Now this is a secret recipe it's, that you're allowing us to get a look at, right? That's it, that's it. Okay, so okay. the flour's in. It's like uh, we're getting down to the end here. The end, it's one of the secret ingredients is bacon lardoons. It's a secret. Well. Uh, bacon lardoons. Bacon that's lardoons. Just cooked up real crunchy bacon, right? That's it. Fry it up know really my hard. Stuff a little bit. There you go. Okay, I now. I cheated, of course, because, you know. Now, we have everything in here for the mix. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put it on a stove. All right, now, you haven't added the game yet. That's going to come later, that's, right? That's going to come later. Okay, right so this now, goes on the stove, and it's going to simmer. That's it. How long? Uh, probably close to two hours. All right, so a that's a longer. slow cooking. And then when it's done, we have what that looks like over here. So exactly. why don't we swing around and grab that. Okay. You go ahead and get that, and I'll, uh, I'll take care of this one. Boy, that could feed an army. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is All right, so when it's done. This is the mix here, and then what we'll do is, is we'll take one of these crocks. This is what you serve it in, This right? is what we serve it in. Okay. We'll, we bake it in there, and then you're, you're served in there. And then we're just going to put some in the bottom. Again, just the mix. You still just, haven't added the just meat, the mix. which you're going to do. Right, and then the meat, I'll let you hold the meat. Okay. Okay, and then we're just going to put in its pheasant, duck, and turkey. It's a mixture. Now, back in the day of the Civil War era, they would have used anything that they could hunt, right? Exactly, right. Venison, bear, whatever, anything. Whatever the kill of the okay. day was. But you use the uh, same one, the same ingredients all the time. Right. And then we'll just okay. fill it up the rest of the way to the rim with more mix. And then we have a crust that we're going to put on. A little crust that you lay right over the top right. there, and then that goes in the oven. And then this goes in the oven. And how long does that need to cook in the oven? Uh, uh, 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. Okay, and that's it. That's it. It comes out, it's golden brown and tasty, and one more thing that you serve it with, which I have back here, another specialty of the house, what are these called? Pumpkin fritters. Pumpkin fritters. Pumpkin fritters. Now, we're not going to make this dish right now, but if you'd like to make it at home, you can find the recipe on our website at adinnerfortwo.com because JR has been gracious enough to let us steal this secret recipe and share it with everybody, so I thank you for that. You're welcome. And we're going to test these in a few minutes just to make sure that they are as delicious as they smell. We're also going to come back and make a dessert from the menu here at the Farnsworth House. But first, we're going to go out to Gabrielle, who has found the location of one of the most famous speeches in American history. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Thus begins the Gettysburg Address, one of the most famous speeches ever given by Abraham Lincoln. Following a two-hour oration by then-famous public speaker Edward Everett, the president rose to deliver the ten sentences that comprised the address at this spot on the grounds of the Gettysburg National Cemetery. No, it wasn't written on the back of an envelope, and no, it wasn't delivered off the top of his head. It was a short but brilliant statement on what the war meant to the country and the bravery of the soldiers who fought and were buried here. And while it is the first line that may be the most famous, it is perhaps this line about the sacrifice of the soldiers that sums it up best. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. We'll be back with more A Dinner for Two after this. On the next A Dinner for Two, history haunts New Hope, Pennsylvania in more ways than one. We'll visit the Logan Inn, frequented by celebrities and revolutionary soldiers since the 1700s, while Chef Alviero Fiasci shares the secrets that make dining at the Logan truly memorable. We'll explore the stories surrounding one of the most haunted buildings in America. Perhaps it's the guests that haven't left that will surprise you most about the Logan Inn. That's on the next A Dinner for Two. I love spring. Everything is turning green and the flowers are starting to bloom. You can smell the freshness of the earth on the warm breeze. It always gives me the energy to get outside and enjoy it. When I head for the garden store, it reminds me how much I like living where you can get the very best of anything that grows. Jersey Fresh. It comes in green and a whole variety of other colors. Pick the best. Jersey Fresh. 
you can bring the adventures of A Dinner for Two right into your home on the World Wide Web. www.adinnerfortwo.com has all the recipes from every episode of A Dinner for Two, as well as stories and pictures from all of the things we do, places we see, and people we meet. And to help with all your adventures, A Dinner for Two.com offers a restaurant search engine so you can dine in style wherever you go. www.adinnerfortwo.com Help give our children hope. Every year, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia treats hundreds of thousands of sick and injured children. Some may be the ones you know, but the doctors and nurses could not work the wonders they do without your help. Join CNA's Connie Cola for a very special mission, giving children hope and saving lives. The Children's Miracle Network celebration, June 2nd and 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern on CNA. Watch it with someone you love. and welcome back to A Dinner for Two. We're here in the kitchen of the Farnsworth House in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We're with Chef J.R. Schultz, and we've already made the appetizer. We already made the entree, so that leads, um, help me out here. The dessert. Dessert, that's it. I knew that. What are we making? Another We're specialty? Making, yes. What is it? Rum cream pie. Rum cream pie. All right, let's get to it. Okay. J.R., our first step. Go ahead. Okay, our first step is to use cold water, and we're going to mix in a gelatin. Okay. And we're going to put it on the stove and let it heat up. Okay. And while we're waiting for it to heat up, we'll go ahead and move to our next step. Okay. Let's okay. go to it. What's that now? So in the mixing bowl, what we're going to do is we're going to put in eggs, which will be egg beaters. Okay. Because we're not going to be cooking the pie. Right. Okay. So for safety reasons, we have to use the egg beater. And then we're going to add some sugar. Okay. Now, of course, we'll have all the measurements and the recipes available on our website at right. dinnerfortwo.com. All right, so we have the egg beaters and the sugar. Now we're going to whip it. And how long does this take? All right, just a few seconds, really. Okay. Just enough to mix, to, to mix it in. We're going to add the rum to the gelatin now. Okay. And how much rum are we using? Uh, we try to keep it limited. We don't want people staggering out. Right? That's it. Okay. 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 All right, now, so you whisk that up nice and... Uh... Right, and it's starting to cool down. Okay. So now we're going to add that to our... Adding it to the egg beaters and the sugar that we already mixed. Right. Okay. Whipping again? We're going to whip it again. And again, this is just taking a couple couple minutes? Right. Tops? All right, right. good. Okay, because now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to whip our cream. Okay. Which is right here. Okay, we're just going to dump it in here. Set this off to the side. Okay. Now we're putting our cream in. Okay, great. Now what's next? Okay, now we're going to put that mixture in. All right. And we're going to whip it up some more. Now this is where you're looking for the thicker consistency. This is where it's exactly. going to happen, right here, right? Exactly. Okay. And about how long will that take? Uh, it takes a few minutes. Okay. It takes a few minutes. And then all you do when you're done, right? All we do when we're done, we'll shut her down, take her out, put her in the graham cracker pie crust. Which we have already done. And that's what it looks and like, that's right? that's what it looks like. And here is the finished product for dessert. It is called? Rum cream pie. Rum cream pie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dig in right now. JR, thanks for letting us come into your kitchen. I appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's go back out to find Gabrielle because she has one more famous Gettysburg story. Mike, we end our adventures in Gettysburg with a story of friendship, love, and ultimately, tragedy. Jenny Wade grew up in Gettysburg with her two childhood friends, Jack Skelly and Wesley Culp. Together they played on the fields in Gettysburg and on Wesley's family land all through their childhood. They grew up and Wesley moved to West Virginia 
Jack and Jenny fell in love. The war broke out and Wesley decided to fight with his friends from West Virginia for the Confederacy. Jack signed up to fight for the Union. This is where the story turns tragic. Jack, seriously wounded in battle, asked his old friend, now Rebel Wesley, to deliver a message to Jenny, supposedly a marriage proposal. Wesley promised he would and found himself fighting in the Battle of Gettysburg a few days later. But Wesley was killed on his own family's land before delivering the message. Meanwhile, Jenny was baking bread for the Union soldiers in her sister's house right here when a stray sniper's bullet passed through two wooden doors and struck Jenny in the heart. She died with a picture of Jack in her dress pocket, never knowing the message of love that went undelivered or the fate of her friend Wesley. Jack died of his wounds a few days later, not knowing that his beloved Jenny and friend Wesley had also been killed. Today, Jack and Jenny are buried only a few paces apart in Evergreen Cemetery. Jenny Wade, only 20 years old, was the only civilian killed in the Battle of Gettysburg. On the next A Dinner for Two, history haunts New Hope, Pennsylvania in more ways than one. We'll visit the Logan Inn, frequented by celebrities and revolutionary soldiers since the 1700s, while Chef Albiero Fiasci shares the secrets that make dining at the Logan truly memorable. We'll explore the stories surrounding one of the most haunted buildings in America. Perhaps it's the guests that haven't left that will surprise you most about the Logan Inn. That's on the next A Dinner for Two. I love spring. Everything is turning green and the flowers are starting to bloom. You can smell the freshness of the earth on the warm breeze. It always gives me the energy to get outside and enjoy it. When I head for the garden store, it reminds me how much I like living where you can get the very best of anything that grows. Jersey Fresh. It comes in green and a whole variety of other colors. Pick the best. Jersey Fresh. You can bring the adventures of A Dinner for Two right into your home on the World Wide Web. www.adinnerfortwo.com has all the recipes from every episode of A Dinner for Two, as well as stories and pictures from all of the things we do, places we see, and people we meet. And to help with all your adventures, A Dinner for Two.com offers a restaurant search engine so you can dine in style wherever you go. www.adinnerfortwo.com it's time to meet this great neighbor of yours, New York's Adirondack Park. Larger than the whole state of Vermont and home to Lake Placid and Lake Champlain. See it all for free. Just call 1-800-2-PLACID. Call now. They're here and they're free. Your Lake Placid vacation planners. And visit us at lakeplacid.com for online reservations at great rates. The Adirondacks. We're what a vacation is all about. Call 1-800-2-PLACID. Welcome back to A Dinner for Two, and welcome back to the Farnsworth House. And you know, Gabrielle, I have to say I had a great time here this weekend in Gettysburg. I did too, Mike. It's incredible to see how the history and battle of Gettysburg have been preserved in time. Yeah, and you know, the Farnsworth is kind of like a time capsule in itself. Its style and its menu really bring you back to the days of the blue and gray. And if you would like any more information about Gettysburg, the Farnsworth House, or about any of the recipes that you saw on today's show, just log on to our website, adinnerfortwo.com. And now, Gabrielle, it's time to toast an exciting adventure, a wonderful weekend, and a dinner for two.